Assalamu alaikum. In the previous presentation, we've covered the original Limburg description of the rhomboid flaps. In this presentation, we'll go through four other variants of the rhomboid flaps. These other four variants are the differential flap, the uh, Webster flap with the 30 degrees and the M plus the, the diamond flap, and the description of Quaba for the square peg and the round hole type of repair. Differential flap was proposed in the 1960s to help in situations where the angles of the rhomboid are not strictly 60 degrees and 120 degrees. Um, if the angles are less than 60 degrees, you don't have to remove extra tissues to make it a 60 degree angle, like the original Limburg, you can use the differential flap. The other advantage is that by having a narrower angle here, the arc of rotation for transposing the flap is smaller, and that would ease the uh, transforming of the flap to the fill up the primary defect. And also you have here a wider base for the uh, flap and uh, increasing its vascularity. There is less of a chance of having a dog ear deformity with this type of uh, the flap. With a differential flap, you can work with rhomboids with angles different from the classic 60 degrees and 120 degrees. You can work with 30 degrees and 150 degrees rhomboids. You first extend the short diagonal to the outside, draw a line, and then extend one of the sides of the rhomboid and draw another line and bisect the angle here. And that's the first limb and drop from there a line parallel to the long diagonal of the rhomboid and that would be the flap the differential flap the lesion is then excised and the flap can be transposed to fill up the primary defect and it would be easier now to close the secondary defect because the angle is narrower and you have less of a problem with a dog ear deformity at the angle of the scar. The diamond flap modification was suggested to reduce the amount of healthy tissues excised uh, around a circular defect to get the uh, rhomboid shape. This piece of healthy tissue can be preserved and now the shape of the defect would not be a rhomboid it would look more like a diamond shape type of a defect. Equally, the flap designed to fill up this defect can be modified because it no longer has to fill up the whole of the rhomboid uh, by reducing the amount of the flap in this area. Um, so it, it is a tissue sparing technique. You would draw the rhomboid shape as usual, but this time rather than you would rather than excising these pieces of skin at the top, you would try to preserve this. Now extend the short diagonal and one of the sides to get the deformental flap design. And now the lesion is excised, sparing some part, some part of the tissues here at the top. This is a diamond-shaped lesion and a diamond-shaped defect, and you can use this to reduce the amount of the uh, tissues that need to be transferred to fill up the defect as well, and the secondary defect can be closed easier like in a straight line and you have filled up the primary defect with the diamond shape uh, flap. The Webster flap introduced two modifications to the original description of the rhomboid flaps. The first is to have an M plus the 
at one of the acute angles of the rhomboid, and this would entail preserving a piece of healthy tissue that would have otherwise been lost. The second modification is to have the angle at the apex of the deformental flap uh, 30 degrees, and this very acute angle would help uh, in uh, transposing the flap into uh, the primary defect and also helps in closing up the secondary defect with uh, less tension and less likelihood of having um, a dog ear deformity. So you start by drawing up the rhomboid shape. And you will then mark the flap by extending the short diagonal and one of the sides of the, of the rhomboid, bisecting the angle. Now, rather than having a line parallel to the long diameter, you draw 30 degrees and get a line equal in length to the rhomboids. So this angle is 30. Now you mark the M plasty at the apex of the rhomboid on one of the short of the acute angles, and now you can preserve that small piece of healthy tissue. Once the defect and the flaps are marked, you excise the lesion, sparing that piece of healthy tissue here to help in the reconstruction. Lesion is removed, and the flap with the acute angle is raised and transposed into the primary defect. And now you have this small piece of skin helping in closing up the uh, primary defect. And it's also much easier to close up the secondary defect as well because of the acute angle here. In the 1980s, Quaba suggested two simple but um, very useful modifications to the original rhomboid flap uh, technique. The first is that you don't change the shape of the defect from a circular into a rhomboid. You keep it the way it is. The second is rather than extending the diagonal full length uh, to the outside and then drawing the second limb, you only extended two thirds of the length of the diameter. So you have a smaller rhomboid in here. Um, so in the original description, you extend the short diagonal to the outside full. Uh, this uh, extension will be equal to the short diagonal. And from there, you would have the second limb again equal to the first limb with a 60 degrees uh, angle in between. In the Quavas modification, you only extend the diagonal two-thirds of the way to the outside, and you keep the 60 degrees in here. So you have a smaller um, flap, and you don't have to change the shape of the defect from a circle to a rhomboid. No attempts uh, are done to change the shape of the circular lesion into a rhomboid defect. All what we're going to do is extend a line outside the circular defect, measuring two thirds of the length of the diameter, and a 60 degrees away from it, the second limb is drawn, and the flap can then be raised and transposed to fill up the primary defect. The first thing to do is to close this angle. This is where most of the tension is. And this will close up the secondary defect well, and then have these two critical sutures at the apices of the flap. And this will fill up, stretch the flap and fill up the uh, primary defect well. And you don't have dog ear deformity, and you have preserved skin at the primary site and the secondary site as well. By this, we come to the end of this presentation on the variance of the rhomboid flap. Salam alaikum.